In a shocking turn of events, a U.S. Navy FPA-18 Super Hornet was shot down over the Red Sea by an American warship in a catastrophic friendly fire incident. The missile cruiser USS Gettysburg mistakenly fired upon the fighter jet, forcing both pilots to eject. Miraculously, they survived with only minor injuries. This incident raises alarming questions about the Navy's rules of engagement and the reliability of identification systems in high stakes environments. Who is right and who is wrong in this incident? Why can't the US Super Hornet fighter jets escape the US own missiles? Next, we will conduct a simulation based on the known information. The Red Sea, a critical artery for global commerce and military operations, has become increasingly volatile with the rise of regional threats. U.S. forces have been conducting airstrikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen, who have targeted international shipping lanes and launched attacks on allied nations. The United States dispatched an aircraft carrier, the USS Truman Asev Ev-5, to patrol this area. The Gettysburg belongs to the Ticonderoga class. In terms of the combat organization of the U.S. Navy, this class of cruiser serves as the main battle command center for the Air Carrier Battle Group, a CBG, an amphibious readiness group. Its main task is to eliminate enemy forces from the air, fighter jets and anti-ship missiles, as well as providing protection for aircraft carriers or amphibious assault ships. Commissioned in 1983, the Ticonderoga class marked the dawn of a new era in naval warfare introducing the revolutionary Aegis combat system. The Aegis system, with its SPY-1 radar, enabled these cruisers to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously, providing unparalleled air defense. Equipped with the vertical launching system, Ticonderoga-class cruisers can deploy a diverse arsenal from Tomahawk cruise missiles to standard surface to air missiles, enhancing their versatility in combat. Beyond surface warfare, these vessels boast advanced sonar suites, making them formidable in anti-submarine operations. However, as technology evolves, so does the fate of these warships. The Navy has faced challenges in modernizing the aging fleet, with reports indicating that Mylon A4 billion was expended on unsuccessful upgrades for several cruisers. This is the FA-1AF Super Hornet, the U.S. Navy's premier twin-seat, carrier-capable multi-role fighter, renowned for its versatility and combat prowess. Developed as an evolution of the original Hornet, the Super Hornet boasts a 25% larger airframe, increased fuel capacity, and enhanced survivability features, ensuring dominance in both air, to air and air, to ground missions. The most obvious feature is the close-up of the air intakes comparing the A18C and 18F. The FEA ADF switched to a CAR-T configuration to reduce the fighter's laser cross-section. It is also an enlarged version of the F18. The fuel tank is larger than the F18 to increase the fuel capacity, range, and payload capacity. The avionics are more advanced than the F18, and the wings are slimmer. It is large and uses a more powerful engine, but because it follows the design of the FA-18, it has the advantages of low technical risk, low research and development costs, and a short development time, so that it can be successfully passed by Congress. Since 1999, the Super Hornet has entered service with the U.S. Navy to replace the aging 14 Tomcat carrier-based fighter jets in E-6, intruder, attack aircraft. Therefore, the Super Hornet has inherited two attack modes, which has been the main carrier-based aircraft on U.S. aircraft carriers from the early 21st century to the present. Today's accident was caused by a malfunction of the friend or foe identification system on this fighter plane. As a result, the Aegis radar on the Ticonderoga
class-guided missile cruiser was unable to identify the target, and the fighter jet was on its way back. The Air Defense Commander aboard the Ticonderoga class received a computer alert. In such a complex theater of operations, the margin for error is razor thin and the consequences of mistakes are dire. The Gettysburg Ship's Weapons Selection Officer and Aviation Identification Officer only had a few minutes to determine the status of the flying object. Was it our own aircraft or a drone sent by the enemy? And unfortunately, in this case, they chose the latter and then, very quickly, launched a missile to try to deal with it. When an FK-8F Super Hornet is targeted by a surface-to-air missile, the crew must execute precise and immediate actions to survive. Upon detecting a missile launch, indicated by the radar warning receiver, the pilot must first identify the threat's direction and type to determine the appropriate countermeasures. In modern aerial warfare, deception is a powerful tool. The FKA 18F Super Hornet employs the 41 Tactical Air Launch Decoy or Tal D to mislead enemy defenses and incoming missile. The Tal D is designed to mimic the radar signature and flight characteristics of manned aircraft, creating false targets that saturate and confuse enemy radar systems. The SEM-2 Block to B is equipped with a dual mode guidance system, combining semi-active radar homing with an infrared seeker. This advanced configuration enables the missile to detect and track target across multiple spectrums, effectively identifying and disregarding decoys. Upon launch, the missile utilizes its semi-active radar to home in on the target's radar signature. Simultaneously, the infrared seeker scans for heat emissions, ensuring the missile remains locked onto the authentic threat. Even amidst electronic countermeasures, this sophisticated guidance system allows the SESM to block IB to effectively engage high-speed maneuvering targets rendering traditional decoy tactics less effective. Now the pilots on the fighter plane discovered that the incoming missile did not respond to the decoy and then fired chaff and flares. Flares are effective against infrared guided missiles by diverting their heat, seeking sensors, while chaff disperses metallic fibers to confuse the missile's radar guidance system. Simultaneously, executing aggressive evasive maneuvers, such as high G turns, can alter the aircraft's trajectory, making it more difficult for the missile to maintain a lock. The beaming tactic involves turning the aircraft perpendicular to the missile's path, exploiting the Doppler effect to reduce the aircraft's radar signature and potentially break the missile's lock. However, these measures have been anticipated by the SM-2 missile, and its computer program has been optimized to cope with these anti-missile measures. Now the pilot of this fighter jet has only one last option left, which is to eject. Within seconds after the pilot ejected, the Super Hornet, which cost our fifth 5.7 million each, was hit by an SM-2 missile with a unit price dice and fee 3 million and fell into the sea. Fortunately, the decoys and countermeasures on the fighter plane had a delaying effect, allowing the two pilots to survive. They were later rescued by a Navy helicopter. Fortunately or unfortunately, the result of this U.S. anti-aircraft missile with U.S. fighter jets was announced, and the missile camp was over. According to this rare accident, it was revealed that modern anti-aircraft missiles have become increasingly smarter. In the high-risk environment of air combat, it is now possible for ace pilots to rely on their skills and aircraft capabilities to prove missile evasion techniques and complete their missions in enemy airspace, getting lower and lower. The plot of the movie Topi Jayu was supposed to be rewritten, and in fact it was.